Hi everyone, my name is Laura Brass. I am a PhD student at QVC and a link instructor with the VCC. Today we will be talking about identity. This is the seventh out of uh, eight free drop-in sessions um, uh, that we have created for newcomer language learners across link levels. Our project, Feminist Pedagogies, is a partnership between UBC Edith Lando Virtual Learning Center and uh, Vancouver Community College, VCC. Across workshops, our main goal has been to introduce participants, uh, that is, link students from uh, VCC, to women's issues and concepts related to gender, gender roles, gender equity, race and ethnicity, and today, identity. Um, today's moderator is Paven, who is program coordinator at uh, Edith Lando Virtual Learning Center and who's been such a great help throughout the project. And I want to thank you for your support, Paven. Um, also, a big thank you goes to Dr. Jensen, professor at UBC and director of the Learning Center, the one who has initiated and supervised this project. Uh, for me, this has been a great learning and teaching opportunity. And for that, I'm very grateful. Uh, last but not least, given that this is our last recorded session, I would like to acknowledge you, the VCC students, your curiosity, your, your motivation are commendable. And um, I appreciate your being open to, to learn new things and especially to share your experiences and your thoughts with me, well, with us. All right, before I get all mushy, <laughs> let's uh, uh, get the ball rolling. So today's workshop is centered around identity, which is one of my favorite topics, uh, which is what I've been researching for quite a while. Uh, this is a very complex construct. I won't get into that just yet. However, I would just like uh, um, to start by asking you, what is identity? What do you think identity is? And so you could either type the answer in the chat box or feel free to unmute yourself and share the answer with us. So what is, in your opinion, identity? Um, I think that's uh, the fact, uh, the fact of uh, uh, being uh, who am I or what, uh, what is, uh, what, uh, what uh, a personal thing is. Yeah, I think. It's very simple. You nailed it, Marjan. That is a very good broad definition. This is who I am or uh, what something is. Awesome. I love it. Uh, how about the others? There's no wrong definitions. I just want to hear you and see where we start from. I think about informa uh, information about ourselves, uh, religion, uh, nationality, skills. Uh, whatever we like to do, I think that's all uh, our identity. That's a wonderful example, Saba, and I agree with you. And sometimes we decide to keep some aspects of our identity to ourselves, right? Or we just choose the people we, we share things with, right? Identity is complex. There's so much, right? Awesome. Yeah. How about the others? Would you venture an answer? So what is, in your opinion, identity? Identity is um, religion, languages, gender, and Shaik, I love your race, answer. And uh, race, 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 race. Awesome, you're building on what we've learned. Yay! Two thumbs up, Shaika. Thank you. Awesome. So, see yeah. all these aspects that we've talked about now tie into identity. Love your answer. Yasuko, would you like to give us uh, uh, your definition? Uh, so for me, so identity is, uh, when I think about identity, identity is myself. Yeah, so for example, is uh, let's see that, uh, who am I in society? So awesome. I think it is uh, identity for me. Awesome. In society, and that's one way to, to look at it, right? Like I've learned that I could have a di or display a different identity depending on what we call society. We call them communities of practice. And so with you students, I'm a little bit different as opposed to how I am uh, within my academic community, right? Or with my husband, friends, right? So that's one aspect, communities of practice. Also, all of your answers to what we have discussed these uh, past uh, uh, seven weeks um, tie into your personal experiences, right? Past and present. 
Um, so it's also about identity being fluid, right? It changes. It's not static. Awesome. Beautiful answers. Now, um, because Marjan mentioned something a while back, I decided to also play a video. It's um, a short video about a man. OK, so it's been mostly women's uh, uh, talks. And so I thought today uh, to just give you an example of how somebody describes their identity, choose a video that has been created by a young man. So I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, show you what uh, questions uh, we have to do while um, watching. It's a uh, fill in the blanks. All right, so we will watch this very short movie, uh, around two minutes. And um, this is what this person has focused on in terms of his identity, facts about him, um, what he loves, what his hobbies are, and what he wants to become. So that would be what I think of in terms of imagining future identity. Okay, these are the questions. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, share the Word document with you in the chat box. So three facts about him, why he considers himself to be pretty lucky, what he loves to do, what his hobby is, and then what he wants to, to become. This is me. This is a short film about me. Some facts about me are I have hazel colored eyes, curly brown hair, and I'm 23 years old. I'm six foot two, a size 11 shoe, and my favorite number is 27. I try to meditate every day. Sometimes I like to listen to music while I do it. Like maybe the Beatles or Crooked Colors. I consider myself pretty lucky. I live in a beautiful part of the world and have beautiful friends and family. I have a desire to learn and consistently find myself wanting to see new things. I guess on any given day you might find me here, or here, but probably more likely here. I'm obsessed with the ocean. I love everything about it, the sand, the wind, the waves. I like to collect cameras as a hobby. I probably have too many cameras. And I'm also aspiring to be a filmmaker, a documentary filmmaker. Making films has always been a passion of mine, ever since I was a little kid. And it's just made sense for me to pursue that. My goal with making films is to make films that resonate with people, and maybe even have an impact on them. Um, okay. Awesome. So let's have you guys share your answers and then I'm going to show you the answer key. So um, let's start with uh, Shaika, shall we? Uh, what three facts did you manage to write down? About uh, him, uh, has, uh, he has um, hazel um, uh, eyes. Yeah. Do you know what uh, stands for? Stands for? Uh, yeah. Like Say again. Tiny yes. color. Tiny color. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> greenish. Greenish. Good. Good. Hazel. Go ahead, Shaka. Go ahead, Shaka. Hazel color. And, uh, and the black hair. Um, hair no. or hair. Black hair. Black hair and curly brown hair. Yes. Yes. Okay. What else? And the six the zero two sixty two as a yes. tall and yes. a, the tall. Okay, so he is uh, six uh, uh, foot two. Do you know what that is? It's around the uh, one um, eighty eight. Uh, um, 
meter tall. Yeah. Six or two and yeah. maybe one hundred sixty, one hundred twenty. Around, yeah, 188. Yeah, if you want to uh, measure in meters, centimeters. Good. What else? So, in a seven, his favorite number. Okay, which one is his favorite number? So, in seven. Yeah. Uh, I heard, I don't know, is it correct? 32 years old. That he's a. Uh, uh, 32 years old you know what I did not pay attention to that I don't think he mentions his uh, his age yeah yeah he doesn't mention no he doesn't mention his age it's just that he's a six foot two a size 11 shoe and his uh, favorite number is 27 mm. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah anything else he mentioned beetles but I don't know is it a group or bug? <laughs> <laughs> are we talking about Saba? Are we still talking about facts? <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yasuko, could you help us out here? Anything else in terms of facts? Fact. Um. Sometimes he meditate. Uh, not sometimes meditation every day. Every day. Yeah. Yeah. Tries to meditate. And sometimes he played music. Uh, music with vinyl yes yes he also tries to listen to music uh did you pay attention these are just details that's fine if you didn't get them um what kind of music he listens to he mentioned um, something oh, i missed this part that's okay he mentioned the beatles and uh that's yeah, I my heard all -time that, favorite I... <laughs> there you go but they showed the little beetle because that's what the word stands yeah. for <laughs> Saba, you got that detail beautiful let's move on why is it that he thinks he's pretty lucky mm, he uh, he has beautiful friends and family yeah and then another things that uh, is the uh, he lives in a uh, part of the beautiful world. Beautiful parts of the world. Beautiful parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Could you tell which beautiful part of the world this is? Mm, I think that oh, 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 please, please. I don't know. You know it. <laughs> you know it. In sounds. And wind. Uh, it, it's about oh, ocean. It's about with ocean. Sand. So somewhere by the ocean, Saba. Yeah, I think it's in Australia. If you were paying attention to the scenery, no worries. These are details. Moving on. Someone else. What is it that he loves? Cameras. Uh, camera. Uh, cameras. Uh, seeing see new things, mm, documentary. Okay. Um, Obsessing ocean. Okay, so that goes with he loves. He loves the ocean, and I love this expression. And I'm glad you mentioned it. So he loves the ocean, and he actually says he is. Can you spell it for us, Saba? Can you spell obsessed for us? O B S E S S. PD. Awesome. So PD. obsessed. Yeah. Double, uh, double S. So he's obsessed with, yeah, with the ocean. And yeah. Marjan was talking about obsession. This is obsessed in a good way. Okay. Obsession or being obsessed with someone or something can have both a positive and a negative meaning. Here it's very positive. It's another way of saying that he really loves the, the ocean. Okay. And what is it that he loves about, um, about the ocean? Sand. Wind. Exactly. Beautiful. So these are details. Um, Sheikha, did you um, catch what his hobby is? Hobby is uh, he, he loves a camera with, uh, for the hobby. Okay. To collect. Do you know the word collect? Yes. Collect the, the camera. Awesome. 
Awesome. How about what he wants to be, to become in the future? Uh, actually, he wants to be, be a, I don't know, but he wants to impact on people. I okay. think I'm going to skip that one. But make a feel. Make, so make a feel. He wants to be a, a such a producer film. I don't know. Yeah. Inspire documentary and goal. His goal in goal is making film, but I think and then if his goal is to make films, that means that he wants to be a filmmaker, right? Filmmaker, yeah. 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 Filmmaker, filmmaker, one word, or a documentary. Yeah. Oops. All right. Uh, and then we go to part of the answer that uh, Saba provided because he wants to have an impact, okay? Impact someone something or have an impact on someone or something, right? And anything else? Before that, he's, he says something else. He wants to, what else? Okay, so he wants to make films that resonate with people. And I really love this. Oh, uh, yeah, this name, yeah. What kind of films? Not any kind of films. Uh, uh, make films that resonate with people. Um, resonate. Maybe have an impact. Yasuko, could you explain that? Um, oops, spelling here. Uh, could you explain this expression to us? Resonate with someone. Resonate someone. Just a moment. Um, resonate. Um, resonate. Any Res idea, anyone? Produce, <laughs> produce or um, feel, uh, produce or increase or fill with sound mm. by vibrating. Or... Mm, I'm thinking of films here. I'm thinking of, let's see, for instance, we were sharing about our own lived experiences. And at some point, I remember Shaika said something about her mother, how she has supported Shaika and her sister to, you know, go to school. And I said to Shaika, that really resonated with me because my mother has been doing the same thing, right? So um, something that resonates with you has meaning, has importance for you, right? It means something. And um, in my example, um, it meant a lot to me because I noticed that Shaika and I had uh, similar experiences, right? So that's what resonate means. Something that has meaning, something that is important. And have an impact, it affects people, okay? It has an effect on someone. All right, so this was the um, listening, okay? We've got some good vocab, uh, be obsessed with someone or something. In this case, it's a positive uh, meaning, uh, Marjan, okay? Instead of saying, I like, I love, I'm obsessed with, um, then um, you want to make something, create something that resonates with others, okay? Uh, for instance, uh, I was happy to see that some of the topics of these workshops resonated with you because you were interested in, right? And have an impact on people. I guess we all want to do something that uh, um, um, is important, right? That has effect on others. All right, I'm going to move on. And for this, um, we are going to need either the documents that I'm going to share, or if you could grab a pen and paper, I would actually love for us to do it uh, old fashioned pen and paper. Okay, so um, it could be something like small like this. Can you see my screen? Or uh, um, you could just grab a pen and paper. If not, I'm going to share my screen and also share the document with you. We are going to talk a little bit about our own identity, and this is up to you. So this is option A, an identity wheel, and then you have to fill in the blanks. Uh, on the inside, you would write about things that are more important to you. On the outside, you would write about things that are not so important. Okay, and I've chosen here uh, just a few. Physical appearance, race, ethnicity, religion, gender, values, languages, I should say, and home country. This is option A, if you want. And you could also just draw this, okay? That's the identity wheel. Um, another option would be an identity portrait that uses a, a human outline, human body outline. 
And here I was thinking we could write about our name, age, languages, home country, physical appearance, race, ethnicity, nationality, religion, gender, pronouns, if you'd like to, personality traits, values or beliefs, and hobbies. So that's option B. Option C, I've done this and I'm going to share it with you. You could draw the outline of your hand. And then again, fill in with uh, all this information that I have highlighted in yellow. And last option, uh, a simple mind map, okay? And that's why I thought we could just use a pen and paper. Now, let me show you what I've done and what it looks like. Going to share my screen. So this is a uh, human body outline, okay? And these are all uh, aspects of my identity that I would write about, okay? This is the outline of my left hand, okay? So this one I filled out with examples, okay? Do you know what sun worshiper means? I'm a sun worshiper. <laughs> that means I love the sun. So that's one way of doing it. You just fill it in with the information about yourself. I'm a feminist, I'm an animal rights advocate, I'm a graduate student. Um, I'm able-bodied, I'm tallish, not very tall, white Caucasian, and so on, okay? Or the other one would be, for instance, a mind map. It's <laughs> totally up to you, okay? The mind map seems a little bit easy. It's pretty much the same information I provided um, here using the uh, hand outline, but this one is a mind map. So you have um, four different options. Choose the one you like, grab a pen and paper. I'm going to give you a couple minutes to fill in with information about yourself. Oh, Sheikha, yours is ready. I love it. And then we are going to share, okay? So in case you might need to look at what categories we are looking at, and again, it's, it's up to you how much you are going to share, okay? For me, for instance, my name means a lot, and I've actually researched a little bit. My middle name is Maria which is a name that my mother has, my grandmother has, and boy, I could talk about that for hours, okay? So you choose the aspects of your identity that you would like to talk about. Let's have a look at your identity portraits. Again, you were asked to put in as much information as you felt comfortable in terms of your own identity. Um, so who would like to uh, go first? May I have a try? Yes, please. Go ahead, Joanna. <laughs> okay. Hi, guys. I'm Joanna, and I will share the um, uh, a <laughs> little bit of the, the hands. So, uh, China and Chinese, and the language is uh, both Cantonese and Mandarin. And now, uh, uh, so I'm newcomer. Uh, now is the uh, Ling student at VCC and um, uh, English name I prefer, you call me Joanna. And the plus A in uh, Chinese uh, character is Jian Hui. It's a little bit uh, plus difficult for uh, in English, in English. So, uh, I have a short brown hair and brown eyes, <laughs> not too thin and not too strong. <laughs> and the middle size of my head. And I like uh, reading and I join a reading a book club uh, here. And I like watch TV and the um, most uh, favorite episode now is This Is Us and uh, The Good Doctor. The Good Doctor is, um, they, they take the shot in VCC, I know. Yeah. And also I like travel and uh, road trip. Awesome. Beautiful, okay. beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. May I ask how you chose this name, Joanna? Is it because it sounds a bit with the, the way you pronounce the name in Chinese or someone chose it Exactly, for exactly. Oh. Yes, because it's the, uh, the, the uh, first 
uh, letter is J. It's the oh, same I as my Chinese name. And I use this name over 40 years. So <laughs> my, become... my friends knew this name both in China and in Canada. Oh, that's good that they know it in, in your home country as well. That's wonderful. Yes, yes. Wonderful. <laughs> a reading okay. club you mentioned, is it something that is uh, um, in terms of lessons you take at BCC or is it the library? Where do you do this? The reading club, where does it take place? Uh, so I have this uh, reading club with my friends and the club's name is TWGT Canada. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. <laughs> I love it. That's one yeah. I want to join your club because uh, I, nice. I love that idea. Uh, okay. <laughs> I love This Is Us as well. Don't tell me I haven't watched the last season. I think it's a really good show. It's about family values. It's a really good show. And yes, I know that uh, they filmed a couple of episodes from The Good Doctor. I was teaching at BCC back then, but I didn't get a <laughs> chance to go ask for an autograph. Beautiful. I love that. I love your identity portrait. Do you mind uh, holding your piece of paper to the camera to see it? Uh, because I look. There you go. That's it. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Is that your hand outline? Is that your yeah, hand Yes. I, I use my hand and draw it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, John. I loved it. Someone yes. else? Maybe I can. Go for this, Anna. Yeah. I can draw. <laughs> this. Beautiful. I see yoga is uh, written within a heart. You must love that. You must be obsessed with yoga. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> awesome. I love it. Tell us a little bit about uh, your identity portrait, Saba. Um, uh, I am from Turkey. Hello, everybody. Mom, by the way. I am Saba. Uh, I am Turkish. Uh, uh, and I am from Turkey. I love, uh, uh, I am 37 years old uh, and I love cats and actually I have a cat, uh, an, an animal lover. Um, I, I am a night person. <laughs> I am going to sleep so late. <laughs> and, I am good listener and advisor, I think. <laughs> I love freedom and travel. Uh, I am not talky people, actually. Uh, I love yoga, so I love uh, philosophy of yoga and uh, read book about that. Mm, I love new experience, uh, experience new things. Uh, I have a love handles. <laughs> uh, I love movies and TV series. Actually, I watch most of uh, movies and TV series. Uh, I love bake, uh, so I want to go to uh, program bakery and pastry in ECC. I want it. Uh, I, am, uh, I love handwork and uh, I am good at swimming and I am good swimmer and diver. Uh, that's right. That's, uh, actually, I am a mathematician. I was a mathematician in my country. <laughs> yeah. That's all. That is wonderful. So many things we've learned from you. I love it. And I love that you use different colors and uh, you chose the part for yoga. I'm going to uh, reach out to you and maybe you tell me a bit more about yoga. My husband keeps saying that I should <laughs> practice <laughs> yoga. I'm, uh, so yeah, definitely reach out to you to learn more about that. Um, it's so amazing. Was that your job back home? Did you used to teach or work in a mathematics related field? Yeah, uh, actually six years I teach math, but and then uh, I changed my job. Definitely different area. <laughs> and then I came here. So are you considering in the future maybe going back to teaching mathematics here? I don't think so. <laughs> awesome. I see, I see, I see. Uh, 
um, you mentioned TV series, and I think that's okay. I have to confess, I binge watch TV. You know, binge watching, you watch a little bit too much until you finish the series when you could just watch yeah, it yeah. episodes. Yes, Most that's people. another... <laughs> Exactly. Something else for you, me and Joanna, maybe the other students to chat about TV series. I bet you are a good listener for sure. I've noticed that during classes. Um, <laughs> Thank you. You mentioned that uh, you. I also love animals. So again, um, I have a dog, but I would love a cat as well. So yeah. Uh, and I think we, um, we could say that we come from neighboring countries. I'm originally from Romania, always wanted to visit Turkey. So definitely yeah. lots for you to tell me about your home country. Loved it, wonderful. Um, how about someone else? Okay, my portrait is a uh, left hand, my left hand. <laughs> your left hand, yes. <laughs> but um, my name is Shaire, I'm from Afghanistan, and Herod City, my uh, religion and Muslim. Uh, I uh, study ever six at VCC. I like uh, speak English very well, and I want to improve my English. After uh, when uh, my uh, when I improve my English, I want to uh, take uh, bakery classes, bakery courses, course, and um, I uh, like uh, I like walking, and I uh, like uh, swimming. Uh, sewing, sewing, and knitting. I like reading and listening more. <laughs> That's it. That's awesome. I didn't want to interrupt you. Thank you very much, Shaikh. I see, and you were speaking. Mm -hmm. Way to go. Way to go. Can I see your drawing again? I think you also drew the nails. Is that so? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. There you go. Because my head was like this. Awesome. I love it. I love it. So um, I hear that both you and Saba are interested in baking, and I think that VCC is the best place for you to continue your studies. Guys, I love baked goods, so please uh, uh, let me know when your studies are finished. I'm going to visit you. We create like, a baking club, reading club with Joanna, baking club with you guys. Awesome. And I bet that uh, um, bringing the... Um, uh, culture from from your um, home countries, right? The food from your countries and baked goods. I bet that's that's going to be pretty tasty, delicious, awesome. Um, what else did you say? You you mentioned knitting. I love knitting too. I'm not good at it. I can only uh, uh, knit long scarves. <laughs> that's it. Yes. That's it. Yeah, that's it's a bit not... tastier, actually. Yeah, yeah. Do you make uh, clothes like maybe sweaters and hats? Can you do that, uh, Shaita? Uh, only hat and socks. And oh, socks, that's difficult. You got to teach me. You got to teach me. Maybe I uh, need some socks for my dog. <laughs> awesome. I <Awesome>. have it. <laughs> awesome. Beautiful. Joanna likes that too. By the way, there's, you know, like here, because we love animals and everything, you could, you know, uh, make for cats and dogs. And I tell you, those are quite expensive. That could be quite a lucrative business. <laughs> awesome. Let's move on. Thank you so much, Aika. Someone else? Yeah, they can. Thank you. No one. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Great job, Aika. Great job. So I think we have Marjan and Yasuko left. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, should I? Uh, can I start? Yes, please go ahead, Yasuko. Yeah. So I gonna make my this. Love it. <laughs> love it. Love it. Yeah. So when I think about uh, like my identity, uh, first of all, so we don't have uh, my pers personally, personally, I don't have like these cultural traits because Japanese doesn't have, doesn't like, like to think about individualism. So that's why it is hard to think about that. Yeah, and so that's why it, so, and also this year, uh, today's session, it is first time to, for me, so, so that's why I really hesitate to, to talk about something or say my own opinion. 
it is humble or calm or ignorance. <laughs> I'm not sure. So it's, it's really reflected by my cultural background. And when I think about myself, and so, yeah, I'm Japanese and also like a Japanese and Japanese doesn't care like any tribe, but I think I'm Yamato, but I, I never think about that. This, mm -hmm. I don't have like this identity in Japan. So after I moved to Canada, my identity come up as Asian, Japanese or Yamato. So never think about that in Japan. And next is, yeah, brown eyes, black hair, and I'm tall, but I was, I'm really tall in Japan. In Canada, I'm not so tall. So, so when I, I, I'm, 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 I doesn't, I'm not change anything. I don't change anything, but I, in Japan, in Canada, my feeling totally different. So, and so Jap Asian culture is really influenced by Confucianism. So Asia is really good or big deal to, to meet someone. But in Canada, age, just everybody say it's number. So that's why it, it, when I think about age, it's, is this big deal or not? It's everything ambiguous. And also, yeah. So yeah, think, yeah when I think about some, uh, my identity, Canadian and Japanese, both. And it, but I, but it is hard to fix both of them too. So that's why I always live in, in the bubble. Yeah, that's all, thank you. That is awesome. That is awesome. And it's also very profound. I totally agree with you. It's individualism here, uh, right? Uh, North America, uh, whereas uh, in Japanese culture is collectivism, right? Yeah. And there's a lot for us to, to learn from that. Um, for sure. I would like to start by saying definitely not ignorant here, <laughs> Yasuko, definitely <laughs> not you. ignorant. And um, I, I, I resonate, I, I, it resonates with me what you said that after moving to Canada, uh, your identity revealed to you in terms of uh, being uh, uh, Japanese, right? Yeah. Uh, I and never Asian. Thought Exactly. That's a more broad general term, right? But you never, I never thought of it being back home, right? So being an immigrant to Canada, you know, there were different layers to my identity and th that definitely resonates with me. Um, and I love your take on age. I really love your take on age. It's just a, it's just a number and you, you use a really good word, ambiguous. That's a good one. That's a good one. And now you also mentioned that your identity is Canadian and Japanese or Japanese and Canadian. And I bet when you're talking with people back home, you might feel more Canadian, but when you're here, you might yeah. feel more Japanese and you're kind of yes, in between, exactly. right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah so that definitely. That's yeah. So, so that's why I always feel like in the bubble. Yeah. So I want to see, yes. but cannot touch, but I marginalize, but not marginalize. Yeah, I everything like uh, ambiguous. But hey, that's you. That's you. So uh, <laughs> uh, both aspects, both parts of your identity yeah. are, are important. Wonderful. I loved your drawing and I love the way you presented it. Um, how about Marjan? Last but not least, Marjan, we give you the floor. One of the uh, very um, distinctive uh, character personality in my uh, for me is I'm extrovert person but now I think that I'm not uh, in my country the uh, people my colleagues and uh, my friends told me that you are extrovert and then I and the way I had uh, some personality test that uh, it showed me I'm an extrovert person, but here, you know, I'm, I think that I'm not very extrovert person. And now I, I feel, uh, I, um, I'm feeling uh, alone now, you know, because, you know, that I can't communicate with people because I think that one of the way that uh, we can communicate with people is language and my language English is not uh, is not uh, perfect another thing is that I'm very perfectionist and 
Mm, again, some people, uh, some of my friends and my colleagues told me that uh, you uh, you take heart yourself, but <laughs> it's uh, their own uh, idea. But I think that uh, I'm not, um, you know, that I'm very lazy people. And then uh, I like um, social science. If I want to start again, you know, that sometimes they ask me if you were born again, if you want to choose again your um, measure at the university. Uh, again, I, uh, I thought that I like social science, I like uh, psychology, I like uh, demography, I like, uh, you know, that uh, everything that related to people, it's so important for me. And, uh, you know, that uh, I think that working with people uh, gave me a lot of experience. And because uh, I work in my country uh, about uh, 16, I have uh, 16 years uh, experience in HR. And then now um, I can't use it here just only for, I think that just only for uh, my language. Another thing that I think that um, I'm an outdoor person, outdoor, I like to outdoor activities and, uh, and there is a paradox for me, you know, that I like outdoors at, uh, and on the other hand, I like yoga. Sometimes mm -hmm. I, you know, that really it's a paradox for me, who am I? At last, uh, mm, I like uh, mm, I like uh, mm, outdoor activities, or I like to be alone, uh, and then I do yoga by myself. Yeah, and uh, mm, uh, and then some of my uh, friends told me that I'm very sociable, but I think I'm not. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm from Iran <laughs> at last things. And uh, uh, I'm very sensitive. I'm sure about uh, it. I'm very sensitive person. That's it. That's, that's okay to be sensitive, actually. See, Saba mm -hmm. and the others, we are applauding. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, you, you mentioned that uh, uh, your friends uh, um, um, describe you as being an extrovert, right? So that's how mm -hmm. they see you. You mentioned that um, 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 you have a lot of experience, um, uh, HR, you mentioned in that you cannot do that here. And um, I, I totally yeah. understand that's one of the struggles that uh, newcomers yeah. uh, have, right, to be able to... Um, um, re-entry the labor market and to be able to do the jobs that they are qualified for right and uh, i hear you that's a lot of um, uh, struggles and challenging uh, times there but don't give up if you really like that you you'll have to you know work yeah. towards that's what happen yeah and one more thing i would like to say to you um, i think because you are a perfectionist you think your english is not good and that kind of keeps you in your bubble but your english is awesome you being a perfectionist, you know, finds fault and that prevents you from chatting with people. We, we've loved having you here and listening to you. So uh, try not to think about it so much. Go out there and enjoy uh, uh, talking with other people. Uh, I'm going to move on and do uh, another activity. Um, this is um, um, uh, an audio poem. So we are not going to read it, we are going to listen to it. And the reason why I chose it is um, because, well, I'm a big fan of uh, Rupi Kaur and she wrote this poem as a tribute to her parents. Do you know the word tribute? It's um, a, an act or a statement uh, meant to show your gratitude, your respect, your admiration. And this ties into what um, uh, Marjan said. So her parents were first generation immigrants. Do you know what that means? First generation immigrants? Okay. She's second generation um, immigrants. So she was 
Yeah, okay. Um, and uh, of course, her parents' English might not be that uh, good, right? Um, she talks about broken English, and yet she admires her parents. And this poem is her tribute. And I was hoping to uh, finish this workshop uh, with this to just, you know, uh, give you an example of uh, um, not having to speak perfect English to, to achieve uh, what you want and to just appreciate the fact that even if you don't speak perfect English, uh, well, that's your first, or, uh, that's your second or third language, right? So rather than looking at the uh, shortcomings, look at the uh, uh, benefits of you speaking English on top of your first language, okay? So what we are going to do, we are going to listen to this audio poem and uh, put sentences in order. So these are the um, uh, sentences that I pulled out from the uh, poem, okay? And the first one was numbered. So what we have to do, we listen to this audio poem and just put a number next to the uh, sentences that you see here on the screen. Our next guest is an internationally renowned poet whose upcoming special, Rupi Kaur, live premieres worldwide this Friday, performing her poem, Broken English. Here is Rupi Kaur. <laughs> I think about the way my father pulled the family out of poverty without knowing what a vowel was. And my mother raised four children without being able to construct a perfect sentence in English. A discombobulated couple who landed in the new world with hopes that left the bitter taste of rejection in their mouths. No family, no friends, just man and wife. Two university degrees that meant nothing. One mother tongue that was broken now. One swollen belly with a baby inside and a father worrying about jobs and rent cause no matter what, this baby was coming. And they thought to themselves for a split second, was it worth it to put all of our money into the dream of a country that's swallowing us whole? And Papa looks at his woman's eyes and sees loneliness living where the iris was. Wants to give her a home in a country that looks at her with the word visitor wrapped around their tongue. And when the winter came, they had nothing but the heat of their own bodies to keep the coldness out. They turned a suitcase full of clothes into a life and regular paychecks to make sure that the children of immigrants didn't hate them for being the children of immigrants. Their eyes were begging for sleep, but we were begging to be fed. And my mouth is full of likes and ums when I look at them because there are no words in the English language that can articulate that kind of beauty. I can't compact their existence into 26 letters and call it a description. I tried once, but the adjectives needed to describe them don't even exist. I ended up with pages and pages full of words followed with commas and more words and more commas only to realize that there are some things in the world so infinite they could never use a full stop so how dare you mock your mother when she opens her mouth and broken english spills out don't be ashamed of the fact that she split through countries to be here so you wouldn't have to cross the shoreline. Her accent is thick like honey. Hold it with your life. It's the only thing she has left of home. Don't you stomp on that richness. Kiss the side of her tender cheek. She already knows what it sounds like to have an entire nation laugh when she speaks. She is more than our punctuation and language. We might be able to paint pictures and write stories, but she made an entire world for herself. So how is that for art?
feel free to unmute yourselves and uh, uh, let me know um, which one you think is the second uh, statement. Two university degree that means nothing. It's what the number? second second one. Do you all agree? Uh, two university degree. Yeah, yeah, I, I heard you, John. I was just asking the others if they agree. I that... think two without being able to construct. I yeah, don't know with that one. Without being able to construct a perfect sentence in English. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's okay, Jonna. That's okay. How about the third one? His hopes are, uh, I can see. Um, yeah. That left the bitter taste of dejection in their mouths. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yes, of course. Very good. How about number four? Joanna, how about number four or two? Uh, two, two university degrees. Yes. So that's it's good. the number four. Uh -huh. Yes, I got it. And number five, someone else? Was it smart? It took toll of our money into the dream of country. That's perfect, Saba. Thank you. Six? I can't compare to existence in the 26th letter. Not there just yet. Not there. They just turned a suitcase full of clothes into a life and regular paycheck. That is number seven. We're still missing yeah. number six. Right. Yeah. With, with the world visitor wrapped yeah. around the time, their times, their time, number six. Yeah. Right, Marjan, yes. Wrapped around their tongue. How about eight? We got seven sorted out. How about eight? I can't compact their exam into the universal. Awesome, Marjan. Number nine. It's the only thing she has left to phone. The last, the last yeah. sentence. The last, it's only a, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nine. It's on. It's the only thing it's she only has thing. left of home. That is not number nine. It's the only thing she has left of home. That's not number nine. When she opens her mouth, no. Her, her accent her, is thick like honey. Her accent. No, no, when, mentioned that one. When she opens her mouth, broken English spills out. That is number nine. How about 10 and 11? These are the last two left. It's the only uh, thing she has left of home. I think it's it's 10. It's 10. 11. Do you all agree? It's the only thing she has left of home is uh, the last one? It's 11? And then 11, it's only things that. Yes, so that was yeah. the order. I have the transcript. I'm going to share it with you if you want to double check. What did you think of this uh, poem, of the overall message? Um, Struggle like newcomer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, John. But I think that uh, she, uh, the, um, her um, parents uh, was very lucky. The uh, oral couple, but uh, not worse than think that when you are alone, <laughs> it's so bad. I hear you 100%, uh, Marjan. Yes, they were lucky to have each other, right? Yeah, they have each other. <laughs> so How about the others? How make you feel your impression of the overall poem? Thought this uh, this poem is representative of me or us. Another thing that I think that uh, he he talked about how uh, how her parents sacrificed themselves for uh, for her. Yes, that's true. That's true. <laughs> One of the things that I like about her poems is that the way she uses the language, right? And um, um, it's pretty easy, right? So yeah. uh, 
she was uh, I think she was born here however so English would not be a, an issue for her I like the fact that she uses a simple uh, language and the way she plays with it right and also the fact that she uh, appreciates her parents rather than being embarrassed right so there's a lot uh, there's a lot there and she's quite popular and uh, one of the things that takes me back to what Marjan said um, uh, Marjan you said that yes her parents were lucky because they had each other and um, uh, I hear you, Marjan. I'm um, I'm right there with you. When I came uh, to Canada 15 years ago as a skilled immigrant, uh, I was single, and so um, when you say that they were lucky, I understand because it's so much more difficult to be by yeah. yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Relocating to a completely new country, I had no family or uh, relatives here, and I think that relocating for sure uh, comes with uh, more opportunities, right? This is one of the main reasons why we are here. Mm -hmm. But uh, for me, and uh, of course for you as well, it hasn't been a bed of roses, right? But I just want you to focus on the, uh, on the positives and keep in mind what um, uh, you, know, you want to achieve, uh, what your goal is. And one thing that has helped me was learning that other women have had similar experiences. Right. So I was talking with you for the past uh, um, almost uh, uh, two months and um, I'm studying about uh, identity immigrant women. That's the topic of my research. And like Yasuko said, coming here to Canada, I started to think of myself as an immigrant, something that I was not thinking about before. Right. And my roots kind of clashed with my new identity a lot, a lot to process. Uh, but I do hope that you will leave this project, you know, more uh, uh, feeling more confident in your abilities, in yourself, Marjan, in yourself, <laughs> and more empowered, right? And um, it comes from within. You you got to work on, um, you know, the challenges we are dealing with, uh, but mm -hmm. also keep focused on uh, on the uh, um, goals that uh, that you have. Uh, well, that's all for today. Uh, this has been the last recorded workshop from our project called Feminist Pedagogies. Our last, last uh, session will be a games night. Um, hopefully in person, we'll have to uh, uh, decide on that. I just wanted to say thanks everyone for, for joining our dropping sessions for your wonderful contribution. It's been such a pleasure getting to know you and I hope we stay in touch. We have a... Um, um, a baking club to sort out, a, a reading club to sort out. There's lots of things for us and I hope to stay in touch with you all. Um, so yeah, thanks so much and bye for now.